The core symptoms in the 1905 epidemic were described in Ivor Wickman's book uh, in uh, 1907, and I'll read them because they're very interesting. Uh, fleeting palsy uh, or weakness, uh, sometimes with shakings or tremors, pain syndromes and malaise, uh, including headaches and head pain, nausea and gastric symptoms was the third. Uh, the fourth he described was tenderness of muscles resembling influenza, and the fifth was cognitive or psychic dysfunction. The sixth was subnormal temperatures and difficulty with cold and heat perception. Uh, transient aphasia, difficulty in saying words. And bladder symptoms, particularly uh, we would describe it today as interstitial cystitis or painful sex. And this is a question that almost no doctors ask women with ME. Uh, what is your sex life like? They don't do it. They're frightened to ask. And a lot of these women have interstitial cystitis, which is not an infection, but a viral injury of the wall of the bladder. The others was hypotonus, loss of elasticity of muscles in the arteries, parathesias, which are abnormal sensations, burning or prickling, uh, and sweats. And these are probably the best description of any ME patient today. Now all, of, all patients do not have all of these things, but these can occur in one patient or in several patients. So it's very important that Wickman was able to describe this in 1907 in his book. The, the shifts in insight uh, in ME and CFS are quite critical to patients' health. For instance, the first major shift uh, occurred in the 1932 epidemic in Los Angeles County General Hospital. At that time, there was a war going on between the doctor describing it, who said it was polio, and the head of the uh, Health Institute for uh, Washington who said this is not polio and they fought hands and dogs about this but the biggest f uh, fight was generated at that time by the insurance industry who if this uh, uh, disease uh, was caused by the immunization that they gave the doctors and nurses at that epidemic they were going to end up paying millions and millions of dollars in 1932 well it was settled in 1938 with the equivalent of the 192 people who had been injured in that ME epidemic. It was settled by an equivalent amount of money that would buy two houses in Hollywood today. So you're looking at about a $5 million settlement equivalent at that time. And ever since that, the insurance industry has caused the major shift in understanding of ME and CFS. And this was seen again in the 1947, uh, excuse me, 1950s epidemic uh, at the London uh, Royal Free Hospitals. At that time, a doctor uh, doing his uh, uh, PhD at Oxford went for half a day to study these patients and then wrote his thesis over half a day on that within one or two days of publishing his thesis with Oxford, it appeared on the front page of Time magazine in the United States, something that has never happened, showing that this was mass hysteria. And this is probably the most tragic thing that has happened to CFS and ME patients ever since that article on the front page of Time magazine. Doctors read Time magazine at that time doctors want something sometimes to laugh at. And here was mass hysteria at its greatest point. And this has been the biggest terrible shift in understanding of ME uh, particularly, because most doctors who even know the name consider it to be mass hysteria. There is no way that you can publish a PhD thesis and then two days later, having an unknown writer get this onto the front page of Time magazine unless the insurance industry put it there.
the exclusion disorders uh, of chronic fatigue syndrome, more so than ME, are really important. For instance, I've just seen seven uh, patients um, over the last two days uh, for the uh, Dutch uh, ME Association. And the very first patient was not ME, not chronic fatigue syndrome, but a wonderfully terrible disease uh, called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Now Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, there's at least 11 forms of it. Uh, you die uh, at birth in some of them. Uh, other than others of these Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome only occur uh, when the patient is somewhere between 16 and 22 years old, often immediately after a viral infection or an immunization, but sometimes they just appear out of the blue. But usually it's after a viral infection. And Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is uh, very easy to uh, uh, diagnose. Uh, all you have to do is ask these patients, stick out your tongue and can you touch uh, the, your tongue to your nose? Now most people can't, but most adults can't anyway. Some children can, but adults, you don't have that ability. The other thing is to be able to take your little finger and turn it right up like this without hurting yourself, which I can't do, or taking your thumb and pushing it down uh, to your forearm, or putting out your arms, instead of having this kind of angle here as most people, the arm actually bends backwards at the elbow, or looking at the knuckles, they're bigger, because they're bigger because their fingers keep bending the wrong way. So this is Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, and what it is, is a fascinating injury uh, to the actual fibers, the collagen fibers in the body, which give the body the muscles and arteries their elasticity and their longevity. And these are broken down, and you can actually look at them on an electron microscope, and they're called flowers, collagen flowers. That is just one of about 20 uh, misdiagnoses in chronic fatigue syndrome, and they are all fascinating. Are there other diseases that you can easily confuse with ME or chronic fatigue syndrome? Yeah, unfortunately, there are many of them. Uh, one of the most easily to do is to understand, first of all, that the primary symptom of both ME and CFS patients is central nervous deregulation, which causes literally all of the symptomology of these patients. Now, one of the easiest things is clotting factor dysfunctions. A lot of people have clotting factor dysfunctions which increase with age, and this can be easily solved by just asking for venous and arterial clotting factors, and it comes back positive, and you know that these people are going to have minor clots going to their brain on a regular basis, gradually causing central nervous deregulation. Another common one which again is missed is the various rheumatoid uh, and arthritic conditions uh, which have central nervous system uh, disturbance. And again, all you have to do is notice the ANA, which is a very easily done test, or the rheumatoid profile which can be done inexpensively and you can pick these up. But there are many, many others. For instance, uh, if you actually uh, uh, look at the medications a lot of patients are on, the side effects of a lot of medications can cause typical ME and CFS symptoms. And you have to go through the side effects of all of the medications. Some of them patients are taken from prescriptions who don't know these side effects. So medication side effects is a major, major problem. And I, I think that's just three uh, things which are easily looked at, easily checked. And so uh, you could go on for hours from there. Mm -hmm.